What's up everyone and welcome to another cryptocurrency market update. In this one we are going to be talking about Bitcoin as well as Ethereum so let's get started. We're looking at Bitcoin on the monthly time frame here and as we've been talking about we are you know we have significant bull volume but we are really overbought so it's important to be cautiously optimistic when you are reaching uh, you know a very overbought part of a market cycle. Um, there's a lot of people buying up here and there's a lot of people that bought down here that are selling up here now. So that's why that's where a lot of this volume is coming from. So it's important to note that when you're getting near the top to just be cautiously optimistic and that look for factors that we might be starting to reach a top. Now let's look at the weekly time frame and this is something that we've been talking about in the past videos is this bearish divergence on the RSI with lower highs and then higher highs in price. And that's signifying decreasing strength on this rise in price. So we might be starting to get near a top. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that we have topped right here at about 62,000, but it does mean that we potentially could be nearing a top. So you look for some of these factors, uh, you look at some of these factors when you're doing your analysis on shorter term time frame trades, um, because when you're looking at, a, you, you have to have a high time frame bias. So that means that when you're looking at the lower term time frames, you need to be thinking in your head, okay, the monthly and the weekly time frame may be potentially getting near a top, so maybe I don't wanna be buying up here. It doesn't necessarily mean you don't buy, um, but it means that you're going to need a strong signal on the lower term time frames to tell you otherwise. So let's look at the daily time frame here and we have a couple things going on. So we have this blue zone and this blue zone is actually from the three day time frame. Now this is a support zone that we printed back here. So why is this a support zone? Well the reason is because we printed the bull uh, trend pattern right here with a low, high, higher low signifying that there are less sellers on this dip in price than there was on the initial low and then a higher high so that's signifying that the momentum is in favor of the bulls meaning that the momentum is carrying the price higher and we pushed down into this level right here just ignore these two red boxes because those are on the daily time frame and we're coming into the blue support level right here now we're trying to attempt to bounce off of that, which is not surprising given that this is a three day uh, bullish support level that this is the first test of. So let's look at the daily time frame and see what we're dealing with on a, on a lower term time frame than the three day. So initially up here, we had our bear trend that was initiated. So we had a high, low, lower high, signifying that the bulls are losing momentum and then lower low right here. So that made this white candle a bearish um, resistance level. So when the price comes back into this level, which it did right here, the price rejected off of it because people wanted to sell up here because this was the beginning of a uh, daily bearish trend. Now, once we got that, we set a, um, once we pushed down from this initial drop down, we set another low right here pushed above, formed another lower high in comparison to this one, and then pushed down below for another lower low right here in comparison to this white candle's low right here. So that then is the same exact pattern as this white candle here. That makes this white candle a daily resistance level. Now we're currently operating inside of that, and this is not surprising given that we're bouncing off that three-day bluish support zone right here for the first time. So the price is kind of at odds with the bulls and the bears are kind of battling it out right now. So the bears want the price to go down because of this red zone. They're saying this is a resistance zone. We should be pushing the price down. The bulls are saying, well, we're coming off of a three day support zone, so we need to be going up. So they're pushing the price up. Bears are pushing the price down and you're kind of locked in a stalemate. So I'm not currently trading at this current moment in time. Let's go down to the lower term time frames and talk about the trade that I took and talked about in the past few videos, which was this gray zone right here. So initially what I was looking at was this gray zone should have held a support on this drawdown right here because we had the bull pattern right here. 
So that should have made this a support level, but you can see the price uh, rejected that idea and pushed right through it. So now when the, when the level gets tested again, it should act as resistance. We can actually go to the four hour time frame to see this. This, this uh, doji candle right here is the level that we're talking about. And we close below it. Once we came into this level again right here, we had a nice push down right here that if you were to enter on the bottom of the wick of this candle, that, oh, using the magnet, that would have been a about 1.9% trade. So it wasn't a very significant trade, but a still profitable trade at that. Um, you got to take what you can get sometimes when the market is doing its thing. So that's what we got. And then we subsequently pushed right through this level and closed above it. So now it's trying to test this level as support. And it most likely will end up leading to support for the first test, which is what we're seeing right here with this candle. People are starting to buy after the decrease in sell volume right here on the drawdown. We're starting to see people buying this dip. And we may push above to go up to at least this high right here. Now, if you were to take this trade, which I personally am not taking because it is counter to the daily trend, which is a higher time frame uh, than the four hour time frame, the daily trend is still bearish. So we haven't formed the bull pattern that changes the daily bear trend to a bull trend. And that's what we need for me to start taking shorter term time frame long entries because then that gives us a high time frame bias that we're going to continue trending uh, bullish. So right now, if you were to take this trade, this is what the trade would look like. You'd have your uh, long position tool, which you can uh, use, and then you can calculate your risk reward ratio very easily. You could put your entry right on the body of the candle, right on the doji, uh, body right there which is roughly right here and then you can pull this up to the high um, right here you could even you could even take it to the uh, the next daily resistance level right here and that would still give you a nice uh, 2.28 roughly risk reward ratio which is still good enough to take the trade uh, if you're willing to um, put your stop loss right below the low of the doji candle. Um, on the four hour time frame, we also have this support level right here, this black candle, which we did not touch on this drawdown, which would also further support price if we came down into it on the shorter term time frames. So when we're looking at it from a daily perspective, and we know, okay, we're in between two uh, support and resistance levels, you can go down to the shorter term time frame to get a little bit more granularity on where you think the price might be going next. And you can look at the main support and resistance levels that are in the closest proximity to price. These are gonna be the most important ones, not the ones from back here or back here. The most important levels are gonna be the closest, uh, the closest available support and resistance levels because those ones uh, have the most validity because they haven't been tested yet. So like this black candle right here has not yet been uh, tested by price. The price has not ran into this level yet. So on the first test of this level, it most likely will hold as a support level because of that, the fact that it's a fresh level. It, you know, if you're looking at using a level from back here, like this candle, for instance, this white candle, and you're saying, we're gonna use that as our, um, our level, it may still, um, you know, be consistent with the price action from uh, over here. So you still saw the rejection here, f technically from that level. If we look at it from a horizontal perspective, it's still held up right here, and we and we reject off it. But this was really a rejection from this level right here. So that's more of a coincidence that it that it uh, that it still used this level from back here. You want to have a bias towards the main point I'm trying to make is you want to have a bias towards the, the uh, support and resistance levels that are the closest in proximity to the current price. So the closest support or resistance level from where we are right now, we just keep going back in the candles to look at where that is. And it's this candle right here. 
So this is our closest available support or resistance level. If you keep going back, the next level is this black candle right here. And if you keep going back even further, it's this candle right here. So these are the two levels that we're watching right now on the four hour time frame. Now, if we end up getting, this is where I will go long on the daily time frame. If we end up on the daily time frame closing two candles above this red zone, which is the 23rd of March candle, I will go long on a retest of that zone, and that will look something like this. The price comes up, it closes two candles above it, it comes back down and tests it, and then we long that and we go uh, probably up to this level right oops, this level right here, which is, the reason I put the X there is because this is where the bear trend began. This is our lower high and then lower low. This is where people stop losses are. So the whales want to push the price up to this level because you can see that there is an increase in bull, uh, bear volume after this high was set. So people are putting their stop losses above that high. If we go above that high, the whales will trigger their stop losses being able to enter a short position with large size because they used these people's stop losses to fill their positions. They need people's stop losses, and this is a point I, I talk about in the videos regularly, but it's important to understand. They, the whales need people's stop losses to trigger so they have the liquidity available, there's enough money in the market available for them to fill a multi-million dollar position without moving price in a significant way. So they're able to get a very good um, position because of the fact that a bunch of other retail investors stop losses are getting triggered. So that's what this level, this X represents is the, where the stop losses might be. So if I were to enter along here, what that would look like is I would be targeting that high. So it would, I could take my long position tool on trading view here. I could uh, put that there and put my stop loss below the, the daily uh, low. And then I could pull this to that high. So if I were to enter uh, roughly, you know, in kind of like 25% of the way into this red zone and target that high, that gives me about an 8.82% profit potential with a 2.2 risk reward, meaning that I'll make 2.2 times the amount of money if the trade goes my way than I would lose if the trade did not go my way. And that, that would be my stop loss for roughly 4% away from entry price. So that's what that would look like. And that's the only daily long trade that I'm looking to take. I did not go long on this three day level, which clearly I should have. Uh, I was talking about it, you know, way back, uh, like in these candles, how I was going to go long on this zone. But the reason I didn't is because the daily trend changed to bearish. And that made me a little bit skeptical as to, you know, how uh, the, the, the strength of the move that we're going to get off of that level if it does bounce there. But we did bounce. So for congratulations to people that did take that trade that I talked about. Uh, you made some good profit already. If you were to just enter on the top of that level, you're, you know, you already would have made over 5%. So that's a good one there. So that's currently what we're seeing on Bitcoin. Let's go over to Ethereum here now. So Ethereum on the monthly time frame, we're seeing a decrease in bull volume on this increase in price. This month has been all the price action for this month has been contained inside of the previous month's time frame. So we haven't uh, broken the low of the previous month, uh, making this a high, and we haven't broke the high to continue the bull trend higher. We've just traded inside of February's uh, uh, price action. So that's called an inside bar when that happens. So we, we're overbought here on the monthly as well. Um, it's important, you know, like I said, to keep that in mind when we're looking at lower term time frames, this was something I talked about in I think last week's um, uh, market update for Ethereum is this equilibrium pattern. So this is where you start to get these, um, you you start to get price contracting. It's starting to get tighter and tighter, meaning that eventually, once it does, uh, you, you know, you can think of it like a rubber band. As you stretch a rubber band, the farther you stretch it 
you know, once you let it go, the harder it's going to snap. So the more this tightens up, meaning that the more it does not break for a higher high or for a lower low, the more significant this move is going to be once it does actually go for a higher high or lower low. So um, what we need, you know, what we're currently trying to do on this week, week, which closes in a day and nine hours, is form a higher low in comparison to this one. So then we give the bulls a chance to break above this for a, another higher high. If we do that, this level, the, the, this kind of like horizontal level uh, right here is going to be a very strong like support level because there's a lot of volume traded in this range. If we close a couple candles above these pink lines and retest it, that'll be uh, a strong support level. So let's look at the three day time frame. So Ethereum had a very similar pattern to Bitcoin on the three day time frame with this blue zone right here where we formed that low, high, higher, low, higher, high pattern. So this is our support level right now. We're currently attempting to bounce off of this as well, but what are we running into? What is this red zone right here? Well, that is a valid two-day resistance level that we have not tested yet. And how do we know it's a resistance level? Well, we had this consolidation period up here where you could argue is potentially distribution from people that went long um, people are starting to sell their positions up here. Um, we had our high, low, lower high, and then a lower low with both of these candles closing below this low, making this last white candle before this down, down move a resistance level. So we uh, are pushing into this red zone now. If we look at this from a daily perspective, we are seeing that the daily candle is currently looking kind of bearish. We're getting a decrease in bull volume here. We're also getting a uh, first test into that red uh, resistance level. So we could continue to push into this level more, but this is the, the, the red resistance level right here is the main level to watch. Now, the, the most bullish scenario for this level would be if we just completely um, invalidated this level by pushing right through it, not even rejecting off at once, closing two candles above it, and then retesting it. If we were to do that, I would go long with my stop loss below the red zone, and then we would target new all-time highs. That is the most bullish scenario for ETH, for ETH right now. But the other scenario is something like this, where we come into the level right here, we reject off of it and we go for new lows. That's the most bearish scenario. But that doesn't, uh, the other scenario is something like where we come into it, we reject off of it, we come down, we form a higher low, and then we, we go through it after, after we've already tested it once. So that is the, um, that is, that is the scenario that we're looking at on the, on the, on the, uh, two-day time frame uh, when you look at it from a daily perspective it's it's uh, you can you can it's this candle right here uh, and this high so if you don't have the premium version of trading view it's roughly going from 1842 down to about 1711 that's your resistance zone on the two-day time frame and you can see we had a lot of people um, you know, buying the dip here every time it fell down, but now we push below it. So a retest of this zone, in my mind, makes sense why it would reject off it on the first test. Um, so let's go to the lower term time frames and look real briefly at what we're dealing with here. So on the 12 hour time frame, we have this yellow zone right here. And this yellow zone is a resistance level that we printed right here once we made this lower low. We pushed above it briefly right here, and now we're pushing down. We could go all the way down below it and then uh, you know, come down into the blue zone once again. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind is uh, this zone right here. This, this white candle on the eight hour time frame, we could even go to the four hour time frame. It's pretty much the bottom of the wick of this candle right here from the 22nd of March that's going to be the bottom of that resistance level. That is going to be a strong resistance level for us on the first test. 
So that's uh, from about 1753 to about 1800. So I'm not currently looking to make any trades on Ethereum right now. There's nothing that really interests me at this time um, besides that two day, um, besides this two day level right here, which uh, the reason, I, you know, the, the only trade that I would make there is is an entry in, in eight hours and 47 minutes you could put one of your your uh, entries on the top of this candle and then another entry if you wanted to use that eight hour level on the bottom of that wick and then you could put your stop loss uh, above the the red zone so that that's really the only trade that i'm seeing right now though um, besides that there's not really much that i'm excited about on eth um so yeah so that's what I got for today's video for this cryptocurrency market update. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informational and useful for you. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for future educational content like this where, we sh where I share some of my trading ideas as well as the rationale and logic behind it and other tutorial videos and educational content. We also have a virtual free event going on today uh, that you can get your ticket for and reserve your spot in the link in the description below we're going to be talking about fundamental analysis which is designed to help you find the intrinsic value of a cryptocurrency like ethereum or bitcoin uh, without looking at the price action so if you combine fundamental analysis with technical analysis which is what we're talking about here you become very masterful in your ability to assess a valuable investment potentially so we're going to be talking about that in today's event. If you'd like to reserve your spot, you can find the list of events in the description below and get your ticket. Until next time, onward and upward.